What's up everybody, I'm Stan and welcome to Detail Comics where we go over comics in detail. This is iRate Reviews, the weekly show where I go over a comic book, its story, its art, give you my impressions and let you know whether I think it's something you should go back to the comic book shop for or not. What we're going to be talking about is Thanos number one. So Thanos number one is a big book from Mike Diodato on the art and Jeff Lemire who's writing this. And Jeff Lemire is probably one of the hardest working writers in all of comic books right now. He's got a number of different titles that are coming out from Marvel as well as a number of independent books including those from Dark Horse as well as Image. And what we get here is essentially the continuation of a story that's been told over several different books because Thanos himself, ever since Secret Wars, he was banished basically outside of God Emperor Doom's universe. So he was nowhere to be found. That is until the Ultimates punctured a hole in reality. So they went outside of Eternity, and that's where Thanos was. So Thanos made his way back in, heard about the Cosmic Cube, Bamped himself back to Earth, and that's where we saw the introduction of Civil War. So this was the Civil War Zero issue, and that's what really kind of brought everything forward. So we've got in the Ultimates as well as in Civil War, that's where Thanos was. He was in prison, escaped from, uh, you know, with help from Connor Sims, and now he's in this situation where he's returning back to his homeworld. However, his homeworld has been basically usurped, you know. I think that's how you say it. But basically, his power has been told, I mean, he's taken. You know, he created a vacuum, and Corvus Glaive, a member of the Black Order, you know, he basically was one of the, the Cabal guys that went and started destroying everything during the Secret Wars and the Incursions, and time runs out. And he took over when Thanos left and finds himself needing to defend his newfound throne. Because the Black Order has been thriving. However, Thanos is here for some ass-kicking. <laughs> so he just drops himself onto the planet and just starts brutalizing everyone around him. And it's amazing because Thanos, the Mad Titan, is like a god. He is an immense source of power and just absolutely destroys everything. But speaking of gods and elders, what we have is a situation where running parallel to the utter destruction of the Black Order on his way to Corvus Glaive, we have the Champion of the Universe. So this is a guy that I'm not super familiar with, and he's a heavy deep cut. Like, he goes way back. So he's an elder of the universe, similar to the Grandmaster or to the Collector. And he's basically a living embodiment of, you know, like being a champion of the universe, I guess. He looks kind of like uh, Lobo meets Macho Man Randy Savage. <laughs> so he's on the hunt for somebody, and uh, under whose orders we don't necessarily know just yet, but he finds him, and that's Eros of Titan, the brother of Thanos, and uh, known as Star Fox, the former Avenger. So this is one of those meetings where essentially, you know, they don't really like each other, but they find that they need each other because this other person has really decided that this is a goal. You know, he's given the challenge to the champion who can't resist it because he just needs to fight all the time. Like he just he just needs to be battling people constantly. So that's totally cool. And who is this mastermind behind these things? Well, we'll just hold on for a second because we're going to go back to Corvus Glaive and Thanos. And Thanos is just mopped the floor with him. You know, the Corvus is this blade, and then essentially as soon as this blade is is broken or smashed, he's going to die shortly afterwards. So Thanos is just like, all right, you beg, and just smashes it with his hand, just like crushes the thing and leaves these shards. And it's just like, I tell you what, uh, you can either take your life yourself or I'll take it for you. And if, you, if I take it for you, it's going to be way, way worse. So Corvus is just like, all right, man, and just throws his dagger, like, you know, the shard of himself right into his stomach and just just done <laughs> just done so so like this is the mad titan back in power he's not any kind of like uh hesitant in any respect he's just yep i'm gonna come here i'm gonna dominate i'm gonna take my rightful place atop this throne of skulls that kind of situation he's just in it to win it but there is another group of people which is going to have the champion included as well as star fox and that is going to be helmed by thane and who is thane thane is thanos's son so he found out, we found this out as part of Infinity, that Thanos had a son, and he's been going around the entire galaxy, you know, entire universe, killing off all this spawn of his, and Thane is an inhuman that was triggered by a terrogenesis bomb that went off in Infinity. So Thane, with a partner that we find out is Lady Death, has recruited the champion and Star Fox to try and kill Thanos. So that's how we open this book. I mean, there's this super huge reveal on the last page, but I don't necessarily want to do that to you guys. I don't want to spoil it too much. 
But what I can say is that this is looking to be like a whole lot of potential in a small bag right now. You know, we've got a lot of different threads that we can kind of weave, and I'm not necessarily sure whose goals are coming from where, but the fact that we've got some Secret Wars pullbacks that we can pull into it, as well as a few different cosmic things, it's, so, it's you know, shaping up to be a really good story, and I can't wait to see where more of this goes, especially since Jeff Lemire has been writing so many other really good books over this course in time. I can't wait to see where that's at. Mike Diodato's art seems to fit it perfectly. You know, when it comes down to the action scenes, the close-ups, the overall texture, it just really fits very well. And as soon as you see the champion of the universe come strolling in, or or Eros in his bed full of whatevers, uh, you know, taking advantage of his position as Eros, it's really fun to see this art matched up with the story. Well, I don't know if other people will appreciate it as much as I did. Uh, I definitely have to recommend this book simply because I, it's the first real big villain book that I'm going to be really excited about. And anytime that you have a good Thanos story or you have a good writer working on Thanos, it's just going to make for a great experience overall. So the combination of the art as well as the storyteller behind it gives me a sense of the whole lot of promise behind this story and definitely a lot of potential. So I'm going to be following along with it as long as I, you know, see fit. Definitely a recommendation from me, so if you haven't had a chance to read it, go grab it. So that's my review of Thanos number one, but I want to know what you guys thought too, so hit me up in the comments down below and we can start that conversation. As always, if you like what you see, hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe right there to get more news, reviews, and commentary on comic books, comic book movies, comic book TV shows and games, and anything and everything inside the world of comics.